Welcome to March's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is binary trees with factors. Given an array of unique integers, where each integer is strictly greater than one, we make a binary tree using these integers, and each number may be used for any number of times. Each non-leaf node's value should be equal to the product of the values of its children. So if we had numbers two to four, uh, basically we have three binary trees we can make we can have two and four by itself and we can also have four as a parent and two two as its children since two times two equals four now we want to return the number of binary trees we can make uh, if the answer is too large we have to do a modulo to the tenth to the ninth power plus seven so as soon as i saw this problem i knew there had to be some sort of dp solution uh, we want to build upon this by creating sub problems because for every value here how many binary trees we can make we could probably add that up to the next uh, parent uh, assuming that the conditions hold uh, so uh, what we'll do is have to do like a nested for loop and find for each number all the numbers that come before it we're going to sort this in ascending order can we find a combination that's going to equal itself we can do that by saying okay for instance four uh, when we're on two can we find a number four divided by two inside some sort of hash lookup and whatever value of binary trees we have in there uh, we're going to multiply that and add that to this value here and at the very end we can sum up all the binary trees that we can make at each one of these arrays um, i did think about can we do this in o of n by doing a single pass uh, but the problem with that is we do need to figure out all the the different combinations uh, or values that we can make beforehand so it's not really going to be feasible to do this in one pass we have to find all these different combinations, so I think n squared might be the best we can do here. So what I'm going to do is say that we had like an example of 248, right? Um, we're going to build some sort of lookup and calculate how many binary trees we can make at each number. At 2, we know at least there's going to be 1 because it could make a binary tree by itself, uh, and, and that'll be it. There's nothing that comes before that, right? Now at 4, we're going to check all the numbers that come before it. So we only have two here. Uh, do we have two times uh, four divided by two itself? Is that inside of our lookup? And we do, right? Four divided by two is two, and we have that as one. So what we'll do is uh, multiply the two together. So one times one is going to be equal to one. So we have at least one extra binary tree here. So we have one by itself, and we have two here that we can build up, right? Uh, now, what about eight? Well, at eight, if you think about it, we have our, um, let's see, 8, we have 4, 2, right? And we have 8, um, 2, 4. Uh, we also have 8, uh, 4, 2 with the bottom here also being 2, 2. And, and the same thing here. Uh, so we have, we have 5 total, right? We have 2, 4 and, and 2 being bottom here. Sorry, that doesn't look very good. But... Hopefully you get the idea. There's there's at least uh, these four plus itself, so that's going to be five. And basically, if we use this algorithm to uh, calculate all the combinations before, we can see with like two, do we have eight divided by two in here? We do. We have a four. So we multiply those two, and we add that. So now it's going to be three. Now we check on four. Do we have eight divided by four in here? And we have a two. So yes, we have another two. So we add five here. So in total, we have eight binary trees that we can make with all these numbers. All right, so let's start coding this out. What I'm going to do is first sort this array, and we'll have a nested for loop. We'll say, well, before that, I'm going to create a lookup. Just call that L and make it a default dict with uh, integer as its value. So if it's not there, it's just going to return a zero, so we don't have to worry about it. So for A in ARR, uh, we'll say for B in ARR. We'll have some sort of temp value here. We'll say like, in the beginning, we'll set that as one because at least we have one binary tree. And what we'll do is say, well, first, if A is, um, if uh, I should say, if B is greater than A, right, then we just break this loop immediately because that's a waste of time. Uh, otherwise, what will we do? We'll say, add to our temp, uh, look at the lookup for B multiplied by uh, the lookup with a divided by b. And if the two are together, then we're going to add that to our temp. At the very end, we're going to say for l of a, make that equal to our temp here. OK, 
Okay, so now we have all those binary tree values that we uh, want to calculate. So all we need to do then is uh, for all the values here, I'm just going to do uh, list.values. Uh, let's see. And I'm pretty sure we can just return the sum of this. And that should be it. So let's see if this works. 2, 4. Um, let's do 2, 4, 8 to see if that works. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Make sure to return the modulo of 10 to the ninth power plus 7. And let's go and submit that and see if that works. And accepted. There we go. So this is n squared. Uh, we do use extra space because of our lookup. So it'd be O of n extra space. You can certainly do some recursive stuff, but really the logic of it is the same. And yeah, that's really it. Hope this helps. Um, it's a little bit tricky to understand, but once you start like uh, going through it step by step, it'll start making more and more sense. All right, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.